Hello and welcome to another adventure at the Craft Shack. I'm Heather, I'm your host, and I'm very excited to be telling you about this one. I started off with the supplies you saw at the very beginning, and I took one of those items, which was a full-size watercolor piece. It's just cheap watercolor paper, and I trimmed it down to a quarter of an inch shorter than the 3 by 5 canvases. And I really only needed three, but I didn't realize that at the time that I was cutting, but it's all right because it leads to a bonus and we'll get to that shortly. So I took uh, three of these pieces and I sketched out three very different looking butterflies. I tried not to be too complicated about it because um, these are going to get cut in half anyway. So um, it was kind of interesting because I was like, I, I didn't use any references or anything. I just gave myself some guidelines and went, okay, a wing, a wing, a wing, a wing. And this one looks different than that one, and that was the goal I was after, so good news. And then with the third one, I went, you know what, let's make this easier. Draw one half and then cut it in half. Makes total sense, right? They're all going to be cut out individually and then cut in half, so we have six half butterflies. And it doesn't, again, really matter if they're perfect or not because um, they're going on six different pieces. So this is some Tim Holtz tissue paper roll thing. I had a piece of it. I cut it into six parts to cover each of the canvases. Then using my gel medium, I attached that, covered the whole outside, made sure to get the edges glued down, and uh, did that to all six of them. Once they were dry and all sides were glued down, then I started with a layer of gesso. Now, I did do a layer of watered down, thinned out gesso to give myself something that would react similar to the watercolor when I put watered acrylic paint on the backgrounds, but yet I did not want to cover up that tissue paper, otherwise why use it, right? Then I took the butterfly halves and I spent way too much time trying to figure out which way they should go, um, and then traced the butterfly onto the other half so I had an idea of where I was going to put the flowers then erase the pencil marks. So I did this to all six of them. I'm going to show you here. I just put it down, traced it around with a pencil, and made sure it matched up with the other side. Yes it does. Okay, do that to all six of them. Now we're going to paint them and I decided on a color scheme. You saw at the beginning I had pink purple, blue, and uh, I used a darker magenta color and a light pink, and then a darker purple, and boy howdy was that stuff strong. Lots of water to water it down again. Remember it's watercolor paper so it would flow and look watercolory. That was my whole goal was to make this permanent but yet watercolored appearance. And you also notice I have mismatched the butterflies because I wanted more variety. So um, this one, I'm going to do this one a little bit darker because it didn't quite match the colorization of the others. The value was too light and um, you'll see why that's important in a second. Then I uh, took the subsequent or the matching um, canvas panels and started, I originally started outlining the pencil line and I knew I wanted more color on that side where the flowers were going to be than um, the left side or, or whichever side that I was gluing the butterfly on and then I quickly realized that was dumb, just paint the whole thing. And you see the contrast between the painted butterfly and the background? That's That was what I was after there. So we're going to do this to all six of these little panels. I should tell you that the original idea of this particular image came from Sean Petit. If you check out Sean Petit's YouTube channel, um, it's one of her uh, videos around the beginning of February, the Sunday inspiration video. and. It was beautiful. I was so, or I guess it might have been the end of January actually, but I was so um, inspired by that that uh, I painted that those uh, that image. And let's get back to that in just a second. Okay, so these are some little extras that I did with the leftover paints that are sitting there. I am going 
to show you the three finished pieces at the end, but not make you sit through painting them. So you'll see what they're like at the end. I, if I have the footage, if I've saved all the footage, then I'm going to go ahead and put that over on Instagram, and we'll get to that later. Okay, so going back to um, the project here, and then I'll talk about Sean Petit's original in a second, but I wanted you to see how I attached the butterflies, because it's kind of thick watercolor, to the the canvases, and it's a thin layer of gel medium on the canvas, a thin layer on the back of the butterfly wings. Then using my paintbrush, I held it down a little bit, then pushed it down with the paintbrush as I applied another layer over the top. And that was pretty much the best way to get it to adhere. Make sure I get all the extra gel medium off. And because it's acrylic paint and water, it is permanent. And there you can see the uh, work in progress of all nine pieces. That includes those three extras that will be over on Instagram, I hope. <laughs> um, okay, so one of the things that, uh, you know, I knew I needed flowers, I knew I needed um, uh, leaves and things, and but I didn't have anything that was small enough for these little three by five pieces of art and so I decided to sort of mask off a stencil and try to use it as the stencil for the leaves and that just did not work very well and that brings me to Sean Petit's original art piece um, she did a lot of stenciling and uh, created a like she used an actual image of a butterfly which I think she has those in her uh, resources, and then some die cuts and things that she put over the top of her stenciled pieces. And I, when I made my version of it, my first version of it, I did it all in watercolor, the entire thing. I didn't use uh, a die cut or anything. But I wasn't, I wasn't finished with it, you know? Like, I needed to do it more, so that's why these guys were created. And you'll notice I've abandoned the stencil idea and just decided to dab green on. I realized this is all going to get covered up and the details are really not going to show on such a small piece. So it just made more sense to put some green in like three different spots. And then um, utilizing this uh, die cut piece. This is like the leftovers after you've you know created a bunch of die cuts. I just save these and use them as stencils when I want, you know, a flower shape or something like that in something. And so if I could just do this in a couple of places, then I have more background filled in and don't have to worry about details too much. And you notice I'm using the same colors throughout the whole thing. And it just was so easy to do all six of these in this in this fashion to just quickly put together um, the the backgrounds for all these little little flowers that are going to be put on. So it isn't so much that it's like a flower that I'm stenciling as much as it is a flowered shape. And then I realized that I wanted some more around the piece as well. And so that's what you see me doing here. So I'm using the darker colors of all three um, and the lighter version of all three to create these flowers on all six images. So everything's very cohesive, but yet very distinct individual pieces. So it's kind of fun. I'm going to go back in and add some uh, leaf elements to the places where I didn't have any before. And I like to speed it up and slow it down in certain spots just so you can see it. And pretty much everything is the same for you know, all six. So you'll see different versions. Uh, in some I'll focus on the teal, like right here, and some I'll focus on the purple, some I'll focus on the pink. And um, so here's where we just started putting in, um, using the lighter colors now. I'm going to go in and make some details. And you'll notice that we go from large to smaller to smaller, and then we'll get to teeny tiny. So this is how you you give the impression of a floral bouquet in such a small um, piece. I'm I'm just creating little dabs, little circular dabs here and there, and I'm filling in 
kind of if you squint your eye, you can see there's like a shape of a butterfly wing and you can kind of tell that there's like too much white or too much dark, you know, and then you just fill in where you feel like that's happening. So I'm not really trying to draw specific flower shapes or anything. I'm just trying to fill in color and value. So uh, the pink ones were by far the most difficult because it was such a pink background that the pink, both colors of pink really didn't show on it very well. So I would have to do a lot more purple. And that's when I instituted the white and was able to add um, more shades of pinks and purples into that one. And so far I haven't gotten out the teal because I'll add that later um, at the end as kind of my final fill-in, sort of like you would do with green um, as filler in a vase of flowers. Again, pink was the hardest. It was really the most difficult to do because you just it just blended into the background. So um, as you're watching this happen, I know it's so, it's so very fast. I am going to try and speed or slow some of this down over on my Instagram um, IGTV account. If you are interested in seeing it a little bit more real time, I'll have a couple of videos over there for you to peruse. But you just notice how I'm just putting now much smaller dots and then smaller dots with uh, the white. And that's what's going to give the variety of more of a bouquet-like is just different sizes, different values. We'll just screenshot it here for a second. And we'll just keep going with that around here and there. Now, the fun part about this, um, oh, and I left this mistake in because I wanted you to see, it's acrylic paint. You can just paint over it, wipe it off, and now it's like it never happened. Um, the fun part about all of this is that you want it to look very natural and almost as if the flowers just became the bouquet or the butterfly shape rather than they were put there on purpose. And so scattering a few behind the actual wings of the butterfly and off the edge of the canvas um, in the opposite direction allows you to have that sort of like scattered feel to it. And it's very natural and flowing. When you watch uh, Sean Petit's video, you'll see she actually ha added drips and things like that as well, which are, you're more than welcome to do that on something like this as well. So I think that would be totally fun. I thought I felt like the drips would be hard to achieve on such a small piece, so that's kind of why I avoided them. But I did do that in my original watercolor piece and loved it. Um, as we watch, it's kind of therapeutic if I weren't going so fast. <laughs> but OK, so here I'm just going to decide that we need more purple, we need more pink, or darker purple, lighter purple is what I mean to say in this one. Add a few more greens and so on. It just it needed more contrasting colors in order to make it look like it wasn't a part of the background as much. And so you'll notice a huge difference when we when we pick up the teal colors, uh, turquoise colors, and bring that in on those pinks especially. So here you can see that these uh, teals and blues will just come in and just add a little bit of pop. I mean, what a difference that makes, right? It looks so fresh. These are beautiful springtime uh, little pieces of art. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to be offering these over on my website as a valentine that you could send to anyone, including yourself. Uh, they will be there, and I, there's only six, so have a little bit of limit on what's available first come first serve so you'll want to click the link down in the description to get on over there and uh, and get your sense look at the difference that blue makes in there isn't that cool so cute all right so now we're all close up and this is where the um, intricate details come in so teeny tiny dots of yellow I toyed with the idea of little branches I didn't really like that so much 
but I'll fix them. And then also the details of painting the, the butterflies themselves. And every butterfly is painted truly uniquely. And uh, I think that was probably my most fun part of the whole thing was creating my own species of butterflies, just painting what I wanted to see there. I did not use a reference for any of these. So these are not real life um, specimens, but I think this uh, adds to the whimsy and fun of, of the piece anyway. And all six of them are truly unique. Look at this one with the swirls on the end. I love it. All right, so to really make that bouquet look less like a blob of painted dots and more like a bouquet of flowers, I utilized this super soft charcoal from Generals and uh, is a charcoal pencil. And I just went around the outside of the whole butterfly and then a few of the individual flowers to give them shape in the leaves as well. Smudged with my finger where I could, but then realized real quickly that my finger is just a little bit too big for that tiny wing space area. So I used a brush, just a tiny uh, acrylic brush, went in and dispersed the charcoal. I outlined every one of them on the edges with the black and my sponge very carefully, and then did a little of uh, Splish splashy with the watered down gold. I love that gold from Golden. I've got to replenish that tube. And then splashed everywhere there were flowers and then added some details uh, to each of the butterflies with the gold intentional. Show you a couple of different ones here. And then this will be a walkthrough of all of them. There'll be pictures at the very end. Um, I did add little uh, sentiments from the Tim Holtz uh, stickers and there you go and you'll also see that I created those individual um, extras in the in the exact same ways that I did the others just with sponges and uh, the stencil pieces and pretty Thanks for watching. I hope you'll let me know which one of these is your absolute favorite pink one or pink two. Um, purple one, purple two, or teal one, teal two. Let me know down in the description which one's your favorite, and if you're interested in getting these for yourself, be sure to check the link below, and have a very crafty day. Bye-bye.